Thank you. Uh, good to be here. Uh, my name is Kolly Juan Hederoth. Uh, I'm the CEO of Sleep Cycle. Uh, I have a background in uh, technology. I've been programming since uh, the 90s. I've been doing online banking authentication, delivery system for Volvo. Uh, also started a couple of uh, businesses um, and I joined Sleep Cycle uh, in 2016. Um, so I'll spend uh, roughly 20 minutes talking about sleep and, and sleep cycle. Um, and at Sleep Cycle, we're a team of sleep experts, uh, machine learning engineers, and product designers. Uh, and we're on a mission on improving global health. Um, and to pull that uh, through, uh, we're strong believers that sleep is the first uh, and single most important factor to that. And with me here today, I have uh, Per, who's the CFO of uh, Sleep Cycle. Yeah, hi, Per Andersson. I'm the CFO. Uh, I joined the company about two years ago. Uh, before that, I have a background as CFO of uh, another listed company, and before that, from, from auditing and consulting. Great. Um, so, very short on, on who we are. Uh, we're a subscription-based platform for sleep tracking and sleep improvement. Uh, founded in 2009, we have millions and millions of active uh, users on our platform. Um, so why does all these users use our product every single day uh, of the week? Uh, that is because we deliver better sleep, uh, because we're not sleeping that good right now. Um, one third of the US population uh, is sleep deprived uh, and it's at a level where CDC, the Center for Disease Control in the US, has actually declared sleep deprivation a public national health epidemic. Um, and we're fighting this. Uh, we're doing that by tracking sleep, and providing insights and, and personalized recommendations uh, and also tools for, for improvement. Second important part about sleep cycle is that we have technology by heart. Uh, we're believers in, in um, the capabilities of machine learning, AI, and as you all know, AI and machine learning requires a lot of data, uh, and we do possess a lot of sleep data. Thirdly, we're subscription-based. Uh, we're distributing the product through App Store and, and Google Play, um, and the price for sleep cycle is $29 um, a year. So, looking quickly at sleep cycle in numbers, uh, we have uh, a little bit north of 900,000 paying customers. Uh, every month, uh, a little bit more than 2 million users are using uh, Sleep Cycle. Uh, in terms of revenue, we're a highly profitable company. We have been since uh, inception, uh, since day zero. Um, we're on um, uh, roughly 200 million sec in revenue the last 12 months. Uh, we're all over the world. Uh, customers in over 150 uh, countries, uh, and we have a lot of data. We have over 2 billion nights tracked with, with Sleep Cycle. I have a great team. Uh, pair I have with me here today. We have Sandra, who's uh, overseeing product, and Samuel overseeing commercial activities. Both Sandra and Samuel are from, from Spotify. Uh, and Michael Korgebeck, who is uh, the CTO of the company. He's a PhD in machine learning and AI. Um, Okay, um, so um, we're doing sleep tracking, uh, we're doing sleep improvement on a very large scale. Uh, so how do we find and attract our, our customers? Uh, basically, this is the good part on being very true to product and, and product quality, uh, because we have a very, very, very low customer acquisition cost and sleep cycle. Um, we basically got our first 20 million downloads without spending a single dollar on, on marketing. And th that is the case still today. Uh, roughly about 75% of our customers uh, find us through recommendations from friends and family uh, or, or app stores. And our customers uh, sharing their experience uh, on Sleep Cycle is really our best, uh, best sales force. Um, Backing up this, this, um, this growth is, is um, product and technology. And um, me, myself, coming from tech, and tech is really close to my, to my heart. Uh, this is an important slide. Um, 
at a first glance, when you look at Sleep Cycle, it really strikes you as a simple product. You download it and you press start and you're off to tracking. Um, but the secret sauce behind this simplicity in the user experience is a sophisticated layer of technology, including machine learning and, and, and data. And I will here talk about two things uh, when it comes to technology. I will talk about how Sleep Cycle works and how we're thinking about sleep improvement and I will talk about how we are intelligent and how we still are keeping improving with the help of machine learning. Uh, so starting to the left, uh, delivering use, user value through tracking, insights, and improvement. Starting with tracking, um, sleep cycle do sleep tracking with the help of audio. So we're basically listening to the users and we can hear breathing, snoring, and movements and so forth. And that is how we transform this audio stream to a sleep analysis. And we're doing that on a pretty large scale. Just during our talk here, me and Per's talk here, Sleep Cycle will process about 100,000 hours of sleep data. Um, second point is that data doesn't make any sense to the user. We need to process, we need to massage it, and we need to make it comprehensible to the users. Uh, so in the inside step, we use all the data to require in the tracking part. And we provide insights, personalized insights. We pr provide uh, recommendations. Um, and um, we're making the user aware of where their sleep health are and how to improve it. And talking about improvement, on top of tracking and insights, we also provide a rich set of tools to actually do something about it. Uh, for example, we provide relaxation content before users are falling asleep. Uh, we provide a smart alarm, waking the user up in the optimal sleep stage, and, and so forth. So, looking to the right here, um, so basically what we have here is we have millions and millions of users passing through, collecting the data, providing the insights, using our tools to improve their sleep. And what we are really, really good at at Sleep Cycle is basically leveraging this data to, and optimizing it. Um, looking to the right here, we have all these users on the platform and they generate tons and tons of data, two billion nights of data, and we're good at using it. We're not only improving the accuracy in the sleep tracking, but we're also optimizing in what kind of insights to what user, at what timing we should push out to our users in order for them to improve their sleep. And while doing this, uh, I mean, coming from the growth side, you can see that we are a very product-led company and we're seeing uh, growth coming from product enhancement. This is really driving more users, who's driving more uh, data, driving more optimizations, more users and so forth. And this feedback loop is very important to us. Looking a little bit ahead uh, to the future, um, I mean, to start, I mean, sleep is essential for health. Um, and we have a product that works. Uh, users are falling asleep faster with sleep cycle. They are waking up more refreshed when they in the mornings. We have 900,000 uh, users that can prove that. Um, but there are two important points for us when we're looking at the future. Uh, the first one is that there's a large untapped opportunity still in the sleep space. We have not solved sleep yet. Uh, we're, we're far from it. Uh, but that is why we're ramping up investments in, in, uh, in tracking, in how we're delivering insights, and, and what tools we provide to what users. And you will see features surfacing here the coming year. Uh, for example, breathing disruptions, uh, indicating sleep apnea. Uh, we will look at teeth grinding, um, affecting 8% of the adult population. And, I mean, look at the, the scope of this. Uh, both teeth grinding and, and breathing disruption probably affects uh, half to a billion of people worldwide. The other important part in, in looking a little bit ahead for us at Sleep Cycle is also health tracking. Um, so one example is that during COVID, uh, we were looking at nighttime coughing. You remember that Sleep Cycle was listening to the user, so we can also detect coughing. And we were looking at like country from country on how people are coughing during the night, and we can see this peak going up, like from the West Coast in the US to the East Coast, through Europe and so forth. And we were kind of a little bit stunned about this. And then we took the data from actual confirmed COVID cases and put that data on top of this. And we can see almost an exact correlation. The only difference that our coughing data was basically two to three weeks ahead of the official statistics. 
So what we were basically seeing on our dashboard uh, was basically COVID spreading out of the world. And we could see it two to three weeks ahead of official statistics. And this kind of got us thinking a little bit about coughing and health tracking. And I mean, we at Sleep Cycle, we spend eight hours with our users every night. That is more than any app is doing. And we're listening to them and we have the users laying in a restful state in front of us. Um, and this is a privilege, and there's no better timing to also use this time, not only for sleep tracking, but also for general health monitoring. Um, and I think both me and the team are pretty confident that we will, uh, during the next year, be able to, to predict coming colds and coming flus for, for the user, uh, and also predict the data we have, daytime uh, cognitive and physical performance. Uh, and even further ahead, I mean, the link between lifestyle chronic diseases such as hypertension, uh, depression, and so forth, uh, has been proven in the science over and over and over again. again. And, and I don't think we are overstretching an inch uh, that we will, in the future, be able to predict these con conditions and also let the user act on them in a preventative way in the future. Now we'll let Per talk a little bit about <coughs> the commercial part. All right, so we are a growth company. Uh, our main focus is revenue growth. Um, we do that by developing our product, by providing users with more services, more features. We attract more users and we can increase prices. Um, so in this page, I will try to explain to you how we derive revenues from the product development. So looking at the pile in the middle of this slide, um, we can start with the main part of our revenues comes from renewals. We are a subscription-based business, meaning that we have a recurring revenue base. Uh, on top of that, we derive new sales, uh, mainly coming from, from the product development. We attract new users, uh, but we also have a very beloved product. We constantly rank very high in, in Google and Apple's um, stores, meaning that we get a lot of traffic and we'll get a lot of cost-efficient traffic. As Kaliwa mentioned before, we have a very low customer acquisition cost. Um, during 2022, we have started to adjust the prices on certain markets. Um, we do that because, first, we have invested a lot in the product, I mean, we can increase the price, but we've also seen that we are priced fairly low compared to some competitors. Um, and for the coming years, we, we, we see that this will help us grow revenues even more. Uh, on top of this pile, we have what we call our new initiatives, um, partnerships and new channels. When we talk about partnerships, we mean accessing users through another platform. So for instance, with Samsung, <coughs> we have licensed a small piece of our technology which is pre-installed in Samsung smart watches. Uh, so if you buy a smart watch from Samsung, sleep cycle is already there, meaning we can access new users directly. Um, we also have a recent partnership with, with GymPass. Uh, GymPass is, is a health and training platform in, in South America. Um, so by accessing that platform, we immediately get access to, to uh, people that are interested in health and training, and that's exactly the kind of uses we want to, to access. So, so as an example with GymPass, we, we started that partnership in September, and I think after almost one month, we saw another 7,000 of new users coming through that platform. So this is a strategy we will try to expand in the coming years. Um, we also have what we call um, a corporate offering, <coughs> meaning that we, we have adapted our offering to, to fit companies uh, working with employee health. Um, and we, we, we started this last year, um, and we have a few test customers, you can say. Um, for instance, Know It, Polestar, and uh, Juve Gordon's football club here in Stockholm. Uh, and what we do is really that we give the, the companies tools to, to work with sleep as a health initiative. Um, for sustainable employees in companies. Um, so as I said, we are very focused on revenue growth. Uh, the targets we have communicated to the market is about 30% revenue growth and an EBIT margin of about 20%. Uh, 
Um, it's fantastic to be part of a, an innovative company, a sleep cycle, but as a CFO, <laughs> I can also tell you that it's really nice to be part of a company with, with a very fine and robust business model. Um, as I said before, we are a subscription-based business, meaning we have recurring revenues. Uh, we get paid up front, meaning phenomenal cash flow. Um, as you see in the graphs on the right-hand side, we have seen a steady growth in both subscription and in revenues. From last year, we started to increase our investments, meaning that we invest more in the organization, we invest more in the product to drive more revenue growth going forward. And that has obviously affected our margins. We come from a very high margin environment. Now we are going for a little bit lower margin, but still we are confident that we'll deliver growth in the future. A few words about the, the first nine months of this year. Uh, we saw top line growth of about 17%, coming both from, from subscription growth and also from growth in the average um, revenue per user. Um, we have expanded our cost base. Still, we are able to scale it. And I would say we have a fairly good cost control and high efficiency when it comes to customer acquisition. Uh, that in total gave us an, an EBIT margin of about 25%. Uh, up significantly from last year. Um, and as I said before, cash flow is, is fantastic. We generated more than 50 million in cash. Um, and to sum up, we held about 200 million in cash in the bank, no debt. Uh, we intend to use this to increase the investment pace going forward. Uh, and we also see that this cash could help us to act on, on other opportunities that may appear. Lua. Great, uh, just a short summary. Uh, so first, first of all, I mean, we're coming from solid financials. We're profitable, uh, our product and our business model is working. Uh, secondly, uh, we're technology leaders. Uh, we're experts in machine learning and we have tons of data to work with and optimize our product. Um, and lastly, I mean, the commercial opportunities that Paris has been mentioned uh, is really ahead of us. And, uh, both in terms of what we can do to the consumer through app stores, but also in new channels and, and partnerships such as that with, the, with Samsung. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Well, thank you very much indeed. Um, what would you say is making you stand out? What is your most unique selling point? Because there are many sleep apps on the market, right? Yeah, I think... Uh, I think we have been around for a very long time and we have constantly been focusing on the product and not just making more features and building it out, but also in terms of quality. Uh, and I think when, when this really is, as we were mentioning in the presentation, this is really the base of why we're growing because people are coming back to us and they know that what we do actually is accurate and that it actually is helping them improving their sleep. Uh, and I think when you look at all these apps, it's like, how hard could it be? But when you start trying them out and you really get into it, you can really feel the difference between what we do at Sleep Cycle and basically and other competitors. Mm. So where will you be in five years financially and what do you need to get there? Yeah, in terms of, in terms of the product, I mean, uh, I believe very much that making use of these eight hours in terms of both improving their sleep, but also, as mentioned, in terms of what we can do in health tracking. I think there's enormous potential in the data that we collect as of now. Uh, and if you take that data in terms of the, the development in the machine learning capabilities that we're seeing at the moment, uh, if we combine these two, I think, I mean, looking at these chronic lifestyle diseases such as hypertension and depression and so forth, I mean, fighting these, um, I think we'll be good on our way on, on fighting these, uh, these conditions. Mm -hmm. Would you like to add? Yes. Yeah, and, and I think we, we have a very scalable business. So when we talk about increasing investment, that's basically to, to speed up the development. Uh, we see such huge opportunities. So, so if we can invest a little bit more, <coughs> we can reach them faster. But still, I'm convinced that we, we, we will be able to scale this pretty fast, which we do with the data as foundation. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much indeed, and best of luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.